The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes till the start of trading. We got the S&Ps catching a little bit of a bid off the pre-market session lows. How about that GDP number? You're talking about 4.9% pace. Quite a number, man. The market takes it and runs with it. We're trading well off the lows. We're about 30 points off the lows in the S&P right now, trading at 4,198. We'll call it 4,200, basically right where the futures opened last night. Yesterday, got a couple deep sell-offs, man, following the Google numbers, following the Microsoft numbers as well. But Google seemed to have the market a little freaked out. We got meta numbers after the bell last night. They're trading a little bit lower as well, and that's after spiking higher initially on their numbers. So meta gives it up as well. And tonight we get Amazon along with many others, Apple next week, and let's get into some of the indices. Overnight, you make it to a low of 4171. You are off 40, you're off 1% basically in the markets. You are off more than 40 points to the downside. We've trimmed those to be down by only 12 in the S&P, and you see even as of about an hour and a half ago, right? Markets catching a bid on that GDP number. We'll go over it after we do a little market wrap of the charts. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100. We're a solid 150 points almost off the lows the last night. You're trading at 14,404. You're negative by about half a percent or off by 75 points. The Dow barely in the red this morning by four. We were positive just when I was coming off the air. So Dow will call flat. Russell will call flat as well. Russell catches a bid excuse me, off the pre-market session lows, we're up by about 16, yeah, I was gonna say, excuse me, $16 off the lows, but basically back to flat. Bitcoin has had itself quite a run. We've been chopping around for the last couple of days near that 35,000 mark this morning. We're off about 500 bucks at 34,330. Crude spikes higher yesterday and you give it up today. We're catching a little bit of a bid in the last hour or so. Crude down $1.70 on the session, but boy, you talk about some volatility, right? From 3.45 in the morning last night, you trade down $3 in the price of crude, and we've bounced about a dollar since then. Taking a look at the Fibonacci's, bumping right up against that 3.82. So put it on your radar, man. 83.70, we're trading at 83.66 right now in the price of crude. Gold contract, backing off a bit. We're at 19.86, gold off $8 this morning. You jump to notes and bonds, you talk about some volatility, man. How about it? Now today, we're getting a little bit of a spike on those numbers at 8.30, right? But boy, you talk about volatility, as our man Basil Chapman would say. The day is very young, folks. The day is young. We got 20 minutes to go until the opening bell. And meanwhile, you see the action in the 10-year, man? Half a point. Just like that, we traded up from where we were trading. Just jumping around from where we were at 830, coming into that number. And we're going to get into that number in a moment. But right now, we're talking about a 10-year yield of 4.93. 4.93. We were all the way down to 105.16, man. Remarkable. Now, we've been talking about this daily trend line, right? Let's take off that Fibonacci number. And as you can see, inching towards the bottom part of that trend line yet again, just, just off of the lows, man. I, I bet we got really close to 5% if we didn't hit it. We're sitting at 4.93 right now on the 10-year. And we jump over to the dollar index. Back to a short-term time frame, five-minute chart. And as you can see, the dollar pushes almost 107 overnight. Since we've got that strong GDP number, we have yields trimming a bit. We have the market trading lower, and we have a little bit of dollar weakness that are all related. All right, let's get into the numbers, man, and let's kick it off with a 4.9% pace of GDP. Where's the headline? There's the headline. The U.S. economy grew at a 4.9% pace last quarter, the fastest since the good old days of 2021. Consumer spending jumped at a rate of 4%, the most in nearly two years. I wonder if Chairman Powell spit out his coffee this morning when he saw these numbers. I kid, but boy, you talk about no room for a slowdown, man. The consumer is alive and well. Core PCE price index increased at less than forecast 2.4%. So that's what the market likes. 
And uh, he took another sip of his coffee and enjoyed that one on that second headline, right? You don't want to see consumer spending going through the roof, but if consumer spending is going through the roof and prices are actually increasing at less than what the market was expecting, you could call that one of the Goldilocks scenarios, man. Yeah, keep pushing the GDP higher if the PCE actually is staying at a level near 2%, right? So GDP accelerated to a 4.9% annualized rate. Again, it's an annualized rate, okay? That's during the second quarter. So you take that number, you basically multiply it times four, what you get on a quarterly basis. The number they were looking for was 4.5%. So a decent beat. Here's the only thing I will say. You're annualizing a quarterly number, okay? So we do this all the time when we get the monthly numbers, right? We get the monthly numbers. Uh, we get monthly retail sales. We get monthly numbers for inflation, right, for consumer CPI, et cetera. And all you got to do is multiply that monthly number times 12 to give you a rough idea if we did the same thing we did in the last 30 days going out a year, what's that give us for an annual number? Well, that's kind of what you're doing here with this number for an annualized quarterly number, right? You take the quarterly number and you say on a, on a, a yearly pace, right, what do they call it? Let's see how they – annualized rate is the way they term it, okay, which is probably the correct way. If you want to annualize that rate, you multiply it times four. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because the actual GDP has an annualized rate of 4.9% that we just got for the quarter. The estimate was 4.5. What's that mean? That means that you beat it by about 0.1% this quarter to get an annualized rate that beats it by 0.4%. The point being, it's pretty close to in line, folks, okay? It is a very strong number, but the market was already looking for a very strong number, okay? Personal consumption, up 4%, as we talked about. And then on the core side, PCE, excluding food and energy, actually comes in soft at a 2.4% annualized rate versus 2.5. Man, the Fed will take 2.4% all day long. Um, yeah, looking ahead, the durability of economic momentum in the fourth quarter will help the Federal Reserve officials determine whether to raise interest rates again. Many economists expect growth to slow in the final months of the year as borrowing costs limit purchases of big ticket items and student loan payments resume. Remember, they kick, they kick back in this month. It's just starting student loans, and that will matter to some degree. How much? We're going to see. But should demand stay robust, it risks keeping inflation above central banks' 2% goal and may warrant higher, warrant tighter, excuse me, monetary policy. It's pretty interesting, the double-edged sword, right? Many economists are looking for growth to slow, but should demand stay robust, inflation is going to be a problem. So which one do you want? Do you want growth? And do you want demand to stay robust, which could risk keeping inflation higher? Or do you want a slowdown, which risks hurting the economy? You want the Goldilocks scenario where you want both, right? And I don't know if it's going to be as easy as many people see. The data suggests inflation continues to dissipate is how they put it here. The closely watched core personal expenditures price index. Okay, that's the core we just talked about. Strips out food and energy. 2.4% pace in the third quarter. Including those more volatile categories, you were at 29 talk a little bit about services when we get back because service sector inflation excluding housing and energy rose at a 3.6 percent rate a slight pickup from the prior quarter we got a lot of earnings to talk about we'll talk some meta shares when we get back s p trading at 4200 we'll be right if back. you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market then rocket equities and options report is a newsletter you should try Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures up by, about, excuse me, up negative by 10 points right now, but you're catching quite a rally up about, about 30 points off of that pre-market session low. We're trading right now at 4,200 on the dot. <clears throat> excuse me. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Check it out with Kevin Hinks, Tom White. We got Amazon after the bell today, of course, but boy, we got a lot to digest with some of these GDP numbers and PCE. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, a lot going on this morning for sure. Big turnaround in bonds have stocks feeling, well, a little better than, than they did earlier this morning. And Tommy, it's interesting. When you look at the number that came out for GDP, 4.9%, people are wondering how in the world can bonds rally off that number? Everyone thought, you know, 5% 10-year yield was just a foregone conclusion on that number, but they rallied. And if you dig a little more into the numbers of the GDP, you realize that the reason they rallied, in my opinion, now this is just my opinion, it was the personal income column of GDP that made bonds firm up here. And why? And here's why, Tommy. There's decelerating income in, in the United States. Current dollar personal income in the third quarter was $199.5 billion compared to $239.6 billion in the second quarter. Decelerating personal income. Disposable personal income. 95.8 billion up 1.9% compared to 6.1% in the second quarter. Real disposable income decreased 1%. Personal savings down from 1.4 trillion, 1.04 trillion in second quarter to 769 766.9 billion in the third quarter. So personal income decelerating, disposable income decreased and savings decrease, Tommy. And I think that is why you saw a turnaround in bonds, even with a 4.9% GDP. Folks, that's why you got to check out Fast Market every day. I appreciate those numbers, Kevin. I was reading a lot about the numbers when they came out at 8.30, 50 minutes ago, and I didn't see anybody breaking down those numbers the way you just did, man. That was awesome. Uh, I appreciate it. I had the tenure up here as you were talking. We spiked to above 106. We're backing off a bit. Uh, 
So we march forward, Kevin. We're coming into a Fed meeting, man. I was talking about Chairman Powell. You got a hot number out there in terms of the GDP number, but you laid out some other claims in terms of some conflicting data. It seems like so much of the data we get, Kevin, not that there's something for everybody in there, no matter what case you're making, but boy, what do we got? Now we got a hot economy out there, but you just laid out the case on the other side that maybe we're seeing decreasing numbers on some of that consumer spending, some of the consumer in income. Uh, we go from there. How about the general market with MetaShares last night, Kevin? We had it spiking higher. I didn't talk to you since last mo yesterday morning. Boy, quite a day in the market yesterday, giving it up with some of those tech companies. Meta, they give it up as well. What do you think of the general feeling right now with quite a day in the markets yesterday? We have, we have real good numbers out of Meta in terms of earnings per share. But remember that three-headed monster when it comes to earnings is the earnings per share, it's the revenue, and it's the guidance. And they... They, they mentioned an uncertain outlook when it comes to fourth quarter and advertising spending. With war going on in Ukraine, now war possibly going on in Israel, uh, in Gaza, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And so I think that uncertainty about revenue going forward has met it down. Well, it was down lower. It's only down about $5 now as we get closer, as, as all the markets are firming up here, Tommy. Yeah, it was interesting to see the volatility on Meta last night, and you laid it out well. And, and um, yeah, I mean, they were talking about just uh, some pretty strong words in terms of just uncertainty, the advertising, right? They're already seeing some weakening of the Israel um, conflict, even though they don't have a ton of direct business, just the environment. Um, they're talking about uncertainty, so the market paid attention. But, boy, we got the opening bell in seven and a half minutes. We'll find out where supply equals demand. With that in mind, Kevin, I know you might be talking about one equity in particular on the program, but what are you guys talking about? about our fast market at 12 today, Kevin. Yeah, we've got an easy day in terms of uh, names to talk about, Tommy. Obviously, we'll talk about Amazon. We'll talk about Intel. And I think we're going to we're, we're trying to figure out the last one, whether we go energy or Chipotle. So we, we've we go. got a lot of names today. Amazon will be one. Intel will be one. We're discussing right now what to do for our third name, Tommy. But it'll be a good one for sure. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man. I appreciate that breakdown of those GDP numbers, some outstanding information for the listeners out there. And uh, we don't talk to you tomorrow, man. We talk to you next Tuesday. And, boy, like I always say on Thursdays, who, know where, who knows where this market will be by then. But, Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man. We'll be watching the show at 12 o'clock today, and we'll talk to you next week, brother. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, no matter what they pick for that third one, man. And check out Amazon, right? Got it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. I mean, you talk about well off the highs, right? Nothing compared to the likes of Microsoft, to the likes of Meta, in terms of how close those equities are to regaining kind of the, the escalation to negative prices you had. You got Amazon. Amazon's sitting right now solid $70 off of the high that you made almost of 190 when you topped out in late 2021 at 188.65 in July. You almost reached that level of 188.11 in November, and then it was a one-way trip to 80 bucks almost to the beginning of the year. So Amazon's out with their numbers after the bell. And you're talking about a company that's got about an $8.25 move priced in in either direction. Now, it's going to be so interesting this, to see how these markets react on the opening bell, right? You got Meta shares, as Kevin said. Now, looking at the short term, we'll talk about Meta. I'll pull them up after the break. Or maybe I'll get them up right now. Uh, now, what's so interesting here is you actually had like a head fake and then a head fake. Okay, just zooming in on last night. Not sure what happened here at 406 maybe somebody thought they got the numbers maybe there was something that was released there not sure maybe if somebody in the den can help me out i was watching the markets and i said they got to be out right they got to be out you had meta shares drop from 300 down to a spike of 286 and then it seemed like either somebody was trying to get ahead of those numbers somebody thought they knew what was going on the market figured out pretty quickly that guess what the numbers are not out you traded back to 300 on meta you got the initial news numbers you got a little volatility you held up there at about 310 and then what happened though the conference call at 5:30 is when they began talking about the uncertainty and you ripped from 307 down to 287.50 overnight and uh yeah since that nine o'clock i mean check it out this morning right you didn't catch a bit at 8 30 you actually caught a bit at about 8 50. This market was trading at 286, and just like that, Meta shares pushing 296, like that. All right, let's jump over to the Meta headline. Why not? We got about four minutes to go until the opening bell. 
Warning on economic uncertainty. Kevin talked about it. You'll hear it today. It'll be interesting to see how the market reacts. Um, they are still spending heavily on virtual reality and AI. And some of the language that they talked about in terms of the spending, in terms of the losses that Reality Labs is going to lose, um, their losses are going to increase meaningfully, I think, is the verbiage that they talked about in 2024, which is a scary remark as well, man. Um, all right, we'll finish this conversation up when we get back. Yeah, how about expenses? $100 billion almost, 94 to $99 billion. We'll talk about Meta when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. S&P is off by 10 this morning. It's going to be an interesting one as this market digests a lot of economic numbers. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Excuse me. We got markets open, and you trade a little bit lower on the opening bell. We get S&P is dropping from that 4,200 price point. We're trading right now at 4,193. You got the NASDAQ 100 trading 14,397. We're off about six-tenths percent in the NASDAQ 100. Dow basically flat this morning. S&P is down three-tenths percent right now, and you got the Russell leading the way in positive territory, up by half a percent. Crude sitting down about a buck 84. You jump to gold off about six dollars. Let's jump to yields. 
great wrap up by our man Kevin Hicks, man. That data, great to understand because that did not make it into many of the headline articles that I was looking at, looking at, even listening. Bloomberg Journal this morning. There's a great wrap up in terms of what you have happening in yields. We've seen a little bit of a pullback, but you still got the 10 year right now sitting at about 4.9% is where we're sitting right now at 105.27 in that 10 year. The 30 year up by about 12 ticks right now to 108.26. All right, we jump back to Meta. Let's see how they're trading on the open. Yeah, they give up some of that gain you just got in the last few minutes. Meta shares trading at 290. You were trading at 300 coming into the earnings last night, as I talked about. So getting back to those Meta shares um, numbers for a second. Now, you know, they talked about the revenue outlook is uncertain for 2024. And that's what spooked everybody. And um, this was the chief financial officer, Susan Lee, said on the call with investors. And I think that's what spooked everybody. I wonder what time she actually uttered those words at, because I bet you could pinpoint it on the chart in terms of where things really started accelerating lower. You do not want to hear a company like Facebook talk about the uncertainty for company-wide revenue, right, for next year. And they talked about that they have seen weakness since the war, since the Middle East conflict broke up. OK, they've seen weakness and they said, you know, we don't have a lot of direct business in Israel or exposure, but we're seeing weakness. Basically, industry wide in the advertising sector, as people pull back a little bit, a little bit uncertain of what's going to happen and how that's going to impact their business. And what it's just like consumers, man, what happens, man? You get a little bit afraid, you get a little bit uncertain. What do you do? You pull back. OK, so that's what they talked about. So it's going to be interesting to see where this equity goes. And there you go. You're trading lower. Even with the S&P holding 4,200, MetaShares trading lower on the open. You're off by 3.7 percent right now. Now, here's the other thing I'll talk about that came out last night. And I was not listening to this earnings call. OK, so I don't know if they talked about this or maybe it was just included in, in their announcement because this story is out there at 420 last night. 420. Our man Elon, uh, which was prior to their earnings call. So this was probably put out somewhere. Um, sorry, that's not the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted. Because that is, again, talking about slide after a warning on economic uncertainty. Okay. But this talks about their drug approach. Now, I have seen a ton of these ketamine mind bloom advertisements have, have you guys seen this anybody scroll facebook you scroll instagram i think i see it on instagram more often um mind bloom okay let me see if they talk yeah mail order ketamine companies the world is changing pretty dramatically folks uh and so what this article talks about here and remember the ethics board that facebook puts together so they have recommendations but Facebook is not beholden to them. Okay, so this is going to go into the politics of next year, which is why I bring it up, right? They love to create this ethics board that they've created, okay, that's going to help them guide difficult ethical issues, except for when Zuckerberg doesn't want to listen to them and then he makes the call. That's the kicker of all of it, okay? So the board found inconsistent enforcement of drug-related posts, and they are going to ignore, Facebook is going to ignore some of its own ethics watchdog's advice to tighten up its oversight of drug-related posts and a decision with widespread ramifications of how people learn about psychedelic drugs. I don't fall one way or the other on this, okay? Because there are a lot of natural pathogens that can probably help people a lot better than being on just regular drugs from the big pharma companies, okay? I mean, one of the things that they're really looking into is psilocybin, right? The active ingredient in mushrooms um, and how that can possibly treat depression out there. So there's a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, you get into cannabis, of course, that's its own deal. But I'm, I'm not all for just limiting that information because there's a lot of stuff out there, right? In terms of even, you talk about mushrooms, man, people just, they just compartmentalize illegal drugs versus legal drugs. And there's a very fine line between the two folks. And many times you're seeing the legal drugs have the worst repercussions possible in terms of getting hooked on painkillers, right? Depression meds that really just uh, aren't doing the job that you want them to do. Nonetheless, it is interesting when you look at their own oversight board 
is meaningless. That's the reason why I wanted to bring this up the most. Their own oversight board is meaningless. And I bring that up because we are about 12 months out from a presidential election, okay? And this oversight board got a lot of attention in the beginning because of politics more so. And I just want to bring it up that even though Facebook tells you that don't worry, we got people on the case, right? We got an ethics board that makes sure that we're following strong ethical standards unless we don't want to follow them. That's the kicker. Um, so this had to do with a post that was on ketamine describing it as quote unquote medicine and a magical entry into another dimension. That's probably where things get stretched a little bit. They removed the post, they reinstated it, it became a big issue. Um, the board overturned the decision to leave it up and made more sweeping recommendations, okay? They should audit what the board called inconsistently enforced policies against selling and promoting illegal and recreational drugs, okay? Now, Facebook said it's going to take the board's advice, and I guess this was last week, but it's all coming out for their news event, saying it will take the board's advice to clarify paid partnerships, okay? However, the company is ignoring the board's guidance to hone policy on what individual users can post about drugs that provide a high but also can be used in medical settings. That's a category that covers ketamine, often prescribed for off-label use in clinics and potentially other psychedelic drugs, probably talking about psilocybin, psilocybin uh, included in there with many others. Nor did Meta commit to the audit that the board urged, saying it will only assess the feasibility of doing so in 2024. It cited machine learning automation that can already find content that violates its policies. Well, if that's the case, what's the board even looking at it for, right? Meta's decision follows comments from around 15 parties. Not all of them made public. One of them was from Mindbloom, a telehealth company that works with psychiatric clinician, yeah, clinicians who prescribed ketamine for home use and had lobbied for Meta to allow posts related to that and other psychedelic drugs. And there's a lot of value to that, folks, okay? I am not familiar with ketamine and how that works and the efficacy at all, okay? But limiting that can have harsh consequences as well. What I found so amusing about that, though, is that Remember all the rhetoric when they set up this ethics board, right? They're going to make recommendations. They make them directly to Zuckerberg. It, it's a meaningless PR board, okay? And when they don't want to follow the recommendations, they don't follow the recommendations. And you're going to see this play out in politics, which is why I bring it up, man. Because um, it's almost politics season, man. It already almost is. S&P's holding pretty steady at 41.96. Meta trading lower right now. We'll check out some of the other equities with their numbers when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps trading above 4,200 right now, but MetaShares not stopping. You're up 5.3% right now. Not sure what gave this thing a lift pre-market, but boy, you talk about some volume on the opening bell. And, you know, I know I talked a lot about that ethics board, and that just is intriguing going forward. But uncertainty for revenue for the entire fiscal year having to do with Middle Eastern wars. Yeah, the market is paying attention to that, let alone what we had going on yesterday in the likes of Google shares, right? Google off 1.5%. Now, it's just hanging out where we were last night, strong, following Meta's pullback. But if Meta's seeing it, Google's going to be seeing it, okay? That's, that's the full side of this thing. In terms of you had Google shares spike lower on their numbers Tuesday after the bell, and they actually traded from 132 down to 126 just intraday yesterday, let alone the 141 price tag you ended Tuesday with. Just intraday, you traded from about 132 to 126. This morning, we hit a 123 handle. Right now, we're trading at 124.41. I was talking about in my program yesterday, man. Microsoft's its own animal, and I think the market figured that out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to coin that phrase, man, because it is. You know, they are at the forefront of a lot of things right now. Their investments in open AI, paying dividends, no pun intended. And the other tech companies are going to find it very difficult to mimic the growth that Microsoft has put together across the board right now, especially when it comes to Azure, when it comes to cloud, et cetera. You saw the miss Google had. You saw the beat Microsoft had. Let's see how Amazon is trading coming into their numbers. Basically flat. Now, you were pushing 130 at the close of action on Tuesday. You're trading at 120 right now, so expectations trimmed a bit. Amazon, we jump over to the earnings tab. You're looking at about an $8.78 move priced in for their earnings after the bell tonight as this market catches a little bit of a bid. Only down about seven points in the S&Ps right now. NASDAQ 100, off of by about a third of a percent. We keep our eye on Meta shares trading at 284 right now for Meta. All right, what else we got? Well, we'll talk a little bit of drugs. Since we were talking some drugs with Facebook, we'll go to the illegal drugs. Merck beats expectations on strong Keytruda sales and surprise COVID drug growth. And that is one of their blockbuster cancer drugs. Yeah, Keytruda. So their HPV vaccine Gardasil and COVID drug Legavrio, not sure. Uh, nonetheless, they're looking for a full year sales forecast. It's a big number, man. 59.7 billion to 60.2. The guidance they provided in August had a high range of 59.6. So they basically upped the range by about a billion dollars on the lower side and the higher side. They lowered the adjusted profit guidance to a buck 33 to a buck 38 from previous forecast to 295 to 305. But that updated outlook reflects an upfront charge of 5.5 billion um, related to the company's recent drug collaboration agreement with Daichi Senkyo. Not familiar, but nonetheless, uh, earnings 213 versus a buck 95. They beat on revenue out there as well. Net income 4.75 billion. 
And let's jump over to Merck. MRK is their symbol. And there you go. Up by about 2.4% on their numbers. We jump over to some of the car makers. Ford. They uh, reach a tentative deal to end the labor strike. Looks like Ford's going to be the first one out of the gate, man. Ford and the United Auto Workers reach a tentative deal to end the labor strike. It's been about six weeks. 25% pay increase over the terms of the agreement. It's going to cumulatively, cumulatively raise the top wage to more than $40 an hour, including an increase of 68% for starting wages to over $28 an hour. It also includes reinstatement of cost of living adjustments, a three-year path to top wages, and a right to strike over plant closures. I mean, that's always a big one, right? There's a lot more that goes into things, more so than the headline number. Many times I've talked about it. My mom worked for Verizon. She was a union employee, man. She was out there on the picket lines a couple times during her tenure when they struck. And what they would do, I understood it because of my mom being in there explaining what was happening, man. And one of the things that Verizon was doing is that they were closing down customer service locations, forcing those employees to then work at a different location. So they weren't firing you. All they were doing was they were just closing down one business and saying, no, you still have a job. You just got to drive about 45 minutes or an hour every morning to get you to your job instead of driving 10 minutes. Well, then what happens? Maybe they close down the next one. They say, no, you still got a job. The location we need you in is just uh, 90 minutes from your home now instead of an hour. And you can see how in the same way, that's the ability that they have to put some pressure on the employees. So nonetheless, uh, you see that get done. Look for Ford potentially have a tentative deal with the UAW. I wonder how some of those other companies Look how they give it up, though. Right? GM up by about 1.2% right now. Ford up by about two tenths percent. We check in on Apple. The big dog haven't looked at them yet. Down about three tenths percent. MetaShare is continuing to drop with the 283 handle right now. Basically, a pre um, at intraday session lows. All right, what else we got? I talked about. It's like one out of three companies in the S&P, folks, report this week. It doesn't get much bigger than this week. Southwest slows 2024 growth as travel demand moderates. What? Says who? Says Southwest. Southwest said it plans to slow its capacity growth next year, moderating travel demand as booking patterns shift back to pre-pandemic norms. We're almost four years after the pandemic. Maybe it's a five-year phenomenon. Uh, net income in the third quarter dropped 30% from a year earlier. They expand, uh, will expand their flying between between 10 and 12% in the first quarter of 2024, down from a previous forecast of as much as 16% growth. It expects to grow between 6 and 8% for the full year in 2024, it said. Yeah, and earnings right in line, revenue just to barely miss, pretty much right in line. So the forecast unit revenue, the amount an airline brings in for each seat it flies a mile, would drop between 9 and 11 percent from a year earlier in the fourth quarter, with capacity up 21 percent. So what have they done? They've increased capacity, and they're losing money per seat. And that's why these airlines loved flying small, right? They, had, they, were, they were making so much money because they're flying less flights, and they're making so much money per seat, and things are moderating now, as that is not quite the case. Uh, and you jump over to Southwest, and they are down about 1% to kick things off. This NASDAQ's escalating, man, to the downside. We got session lows almost right now at 14,362. What else we got up here? We'll check out Comcast. CMCSA. Down 5.8%. And some decent numbers, man, to be a public company. You talk about a high standard, man. Comcast lost 18,000 residential broadband sub subscribers, but it gained almost 300,000 wireless subscribers. Peacock added 4 million subscribers and 830 million in revenue. Now, percentages on small numbers can be deceiving, okay? Oppenheimer became the highest grossing biopic of all time, bringing in more than 900 million in the box office revenue. Still, theatrical revenue fell 25% in the quarter from a year earlier, but nonetheless, they trade lower, man. Yeah.
even with Oppenheimer, even with some good gains, you got Comcast down almost 6%. Markets trading in the red. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. We got markets giving it up a bit right now. The S&Ps trade lower on the opening bell. We're trading right now off 22 points. That's an intraday session low, trading at 41.88, about half a percent in the red. NASDAQ 100, that's a full percent in the red, off 140 points. Dow up by 12. Russell up by five this morning. We jump over to some of those stocks that are really trading. Meta continuing to trade to lows. We're at 281 right now. You made it to 279.40. You're off by 6.5. 2%. And keep in mind, that's off 6.2%, closing things out at 300. You were just trading at 315 on Tuesday. Okay. So you are $35 off of where this thing was trading at on Tuesday, which is what? 11 to 12% haircut. Now, 11 to 12% is not that big of a deal when this thing is up about 150%, right? Even more than that. You enter the year at 115. Yeah, we're still up like 150% for the year. Still trading at 281. Remarkable. Let's check around to some of the other FANG stocks. As I mentioned, Amazon, with their numbers after the bell today, they're off by 2.2% right now. Kevin mentioned one of the companies that they may be talking about on fast market, Chipotle Mexican Grill. You want some volatility premium. Uh, Percentage-wise, not too surprising, but numbers-wise, $113 
is priced in in either direction. You got an $1,828 stock for Chipotle. They're out with their numbers after the bell today as well. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks, see how they're digesting some of the action of yesterday. We jump to Microsoft shares. Yeah, even Microsoft giving it up. Look at this, man. Microsoft is only up $4 from where they were when they announced their numbers on Tuesday, man. It's got to be frustrating sometimes to be a public company. Google, yeah, you're off by another 3%, man. Google just gave up 15% from where it was trading at on Tuesday. Watch out, folks. Let's jump to NVIDIA. NVIDIA did not like to hear that Google might be trimming how much they're going to be spending on AI yesterday. You traded from 435 to 400. This morning, you give up those gains. We're off by 1.4%. Stay nimble, stay quick, folks. It's going to be an interesting day, and we'll finish it up with Meta. Why not? 282.40, Meta shares off by 5.7% as we got the S&Ps off by about 20. Folks, thanks so much for starting your Thursday morning off right here with me at TFNN. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's in the chair. He's getting ready. He's coming up with the Tiger Technicians Hour next. The day is young. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.